Welcome to this Tutor to You video for AQA Air Level Sociology. In this video, we're going to do a walkthrough of a methods in context exam style question. The question is on unstructured interviews and identity formation, and it is a methods in context question that would appear on paper one of your AQA A level sociology looking at education and theory and methods. In this video, we've created a speculative question that is based on the same style as AQA use, but for copyright purposes, obviously it's been written by tutor to you, both the item and the question. The item itself is really useful for when you're doing the question and should be your first port of call when you're looking at how you're going to answer this question. There are two paragraphs. The first paragraph focuses largely on the topic that is being investigated and the potential research subjects. So it's very much the context is the first paragraph. This is where you would think about doing some research. This would be the research context. The second paragraph looks at the method, and this looks at how a sociologist might investigate the topic that is listed. Both of these paragraphs will have hints as to how you should approach the question and they'll give you lots of information that you can use. The key skill this question looks at is application, particularly application of your knowledge of research methods to a specific context in education. It is probably the closest question across the course to thinking like a sociologist who is going to conduct this piece of research with a specific group on a specific issue. The question here is asking you to apply material from item C and your knowledge of sociological research methods, which means not everything has to come from the item. I would say a lot of it will come from the item, but not everything. Evaluate strengths and limitations of using unstructured interviews. This is what we call the how. How are you going to do it? To investigate the impact of in-school processes on the formation of pupils' identities. So in there, we've got a hint at the what is the topic we're studying, formation of pupil identities and the impact of in-school processes on those. And we've also got a little bit of a hint at the who we might be researching because it's pupil identities. We would naturally go with pupils, but you may also interview teachers on the formation of pupil identities as well and their role in it because we're talking about impact of in-school processes. So if we just read through the item, it says in-school processes can impact on how pupils' identity is formed. Interaction with peers and teachers can have both positive and negative impacts on how young people see themselves and their place in wider society. While some pupils will have positive experiences of the education system, others may be subject to discrimination. Additionally, the impact of in-school processes on a pupil's identity may take place over a long period of time and not be directly observable. Our second paragraph, one way sociologists investigate in-school processes is through conducting unstructured interviews. Whilst these are usually small scale, they can gain a valuable insight into the motivations of individuals. Furthermore, researchers are able to develop a relationship with pupils and teachers, and this gives a greater insight into an individual's perception of education. Now that we've looked at the item, what we should really look to do is annotate some of the ideas in that item that will help us to answer the question. But there are three kind of key ideas that you're going to see hinted at in the item. First of all, and when we do this activity, we're going to highlight this one in yellow. Who are we going to research? And we need to find out the characteristics of those people we are going to research. Because it's on in-school processes and pupils' identities, we're more than likely going to be focusing on teachers and pupils. We need to think about the characteristics of those people when they are being researched. We're going to highlight in blue what we are going to research. So we need to focus on the characteristics of the topic. So pupil identities is our topic. What is specific about pupil identities that might cause us some issues when we are doing the research on how might those issues be addressed by the specific method? And then how, and we've highlighted these ones in green, how are we going to conduct the research? And we're looking for specific strengths or limitations of that method. 
And when we say specific strengths or limitations of the method, in this instance, it's unstructured interviews. So we need features that are unique to unstructured interviews. For example, development of a rapport, the ability to ask probing questions and follow up questions. They are very specific to unstructured interviews. And if you focus on those, you're going to be getting into the higher levels in the mark scheme. So when we get the paper, the first thing we should look to do is annotate the item. I'm going to annotate some of these using the color coding we've already discussed. If you do want to pause and you want to annotate your own version of this, you can do. But let's look at the hints that I've picked out of this item. So first of all, peers and teachers, interaction with peers and teachers. We could have gone two ways with this. We know that interactions with peers and teachers can be a feature of identity formation, but it's also giving us a hint at who we might research. So we've colored this one in yellow. Our second hook, which we've colored in blue, positive and negative impacts on how young people see themselves and their place in wider society. Well, if something has a positive or a negative impact, this could potentially be a sensitive topic and therefore using an unstructured interview might be useful. It does say here, while some pupils have positive experience in the education system, others might be subject to discrimination. Well, we know that discrimination can impact on an individual's identity formation, whether that is class discrimination, racism or sexism. And that might be something we need to take into account when we are answering this question. Then we have an, what I would see as being a methodological issue here. The, the impact of in-school processes may take place over a long period of time and they may not be directly observable. So if we're doing an interview, is this a positive thing or a negative thing? If we were doing an observation, it may be very different. But the fact that it, they are not directly observable is this a benefit of us doing unstructured interviews? So we've colored this one in green to link in, to link into an issue with the method, but you can also say that this shows us as a problem with measuring identity formation. How do we measure it? Moving on to the second paragraph, we've got small scale. Now this can be a benefit or it can be a limitation depending on what type of data you're going to get. They can also gain a valuable insight into the motivations of individuals. If we think theoretically, who is going to prefer that type of method? What type of data might it give us? Furthermore, researchers are able to develop a relationship with pupils and teachers. Again, another hint at who we might be researching. And then finally, a greater insight into an individual's perception of education. Obviously this links in with many of our theoretical strengths, things like Verstehen and validity. What we've done here is we've highlighted eight hooks that can help us with this essay. And that is quite a good range of hooks that we could potentially use to write this essay. You may want to set out an introduction for this question. They can be useful to organize your thoughts and set out some of the key features of the method. Often it's more difficult to suggest that a certain method is preferred by a certain approach in specifically in the context. So you might want to do a very brief introduction that looks at some of the key features of that method to get some of your knowledge in there. So we've done one here that says unstructured interviews are preferred by interpretivists as they produce qualitative data that reveals the meanings and motivations behind people's actions. This gives it greater validity However, the non-standardized format raises issues of reliability as those being interviewed are not subject to the same questions and therefore may not be replicable. A couple of points in there, a strength and a limitation. It's not applied to the method whatsoever. This is very much a research methods uh, response. But what you're doing is you're highlighting to an examiner that you've got a knowledge of what an unstructured interview is and some of the key features of it. When we go to look at the main body of the essay, we need to develop those points more and link them to the context. So our next activity, 
So what we've done here is we've summarized what we've picked out of the item. So we can see here, we've got our hooks down the left-hand side and whether it relates to the who, the what, or the how. What we're going to do is we're going to reveal how we link these three things together. So our hook is peers and teachers. This indicates to us that we're going to be doing interviews with pupils and teachers. And you might want to consider what differences might there be between a researcher interviewing a pupil and a researcher interviewing a teacher. Are there any status differences between those three people? If there are status differences, for example, between pupils and researchers, how might that impact on the conduct of the unstructured interview? What might a researcher have to do? With teachers, there's probably less likely to be status differences. How might that impact the conduct of the interview? Now we're gonna link in the how. Well, because it's unstructured interviews, we need to gain access to pupils and teachers. And because they are quite a time consuming method, there could be some time constraints on those. So we need to interview pupils and teachers. We need to gain access to those pupils and teachers and there are time constraints to those. We've now linked the who and the how together. We could develop that point by talking about why there might be time constraints on pupils and teachers. They may have busy schedules, lots of work to do. You need to access them during school hours. We're also going to link into the what, the topic, the topic of pupil identity. Will school provide us with access given the nature of the topic? Well, we saw in the item that it hints at a possible sensitive topic. It hints at a topic that if the school are found to negatively impact on pupils' identities, they may not want others to find out about that. It may put them in a bad position. It may have negative publicity and it may have an impact on enrolments. And what you've got there is you've got a response that has linked the who, the what and the how. If we look at our second hook, positive and negative impacts, and we highlighted that this could be a potentially sensitive issue to discuss. Well, who is it going to be potentially sensitive for? those pupils who've been negatively impacted by the way their identity has been formed by the education system. And this includes how it could impact on their achievement. Now here we're focusing about the topic and the people who are subject to identity formation. Now we have to link that in to the method. So because it's potentially sensitive and because it could have negative impacts on pupils, this might not be disclosed by teachers in an interview. The teacher might not disclose that they have had a negative impact on a pupil's identity formation because it would have long ranging effects such as negative impact on their achievement. So again, we've tied the who, the what and the how together. Discrimination. Who is most likely to face discrimination? So we may want to focus on the characteristics of ethnic minority or female pupils. There could be status differences with a researcher. If we are talking about um, sexism, would a female pupil want to discuss sexism with a male researcher? That could be an issue. But let's link this into our how, into our unstructured interview. Well, the researcher is able to show empathy. The researcher can develop a rapport and show empathy with the pupil because they've suffered something that clearly has had a negative impact on them. Again, we've linked the who, the what and the how together. The idea that it is not directly observable, well, we've mentioned here that there is a difficulty in measuring identity formation through quantitative measures. Would pupils be aware of the ways in which processes have had an impact on them? For example, with racialized expectations of teachers or labeling of pupils, will they know that the teachers have these racialized attitudes? Will they know that they are being negatively labeled? Will they be able to voice that? Using an unstructured interview, you may be able to probe a little bit deeper to get more information. And there again, we've linked the who, the what and the how. 
We're going to do the same for some of the other hooks. So it's small scale, which means we're unable to generalize to the wider population. But our focus on small groups of pupils and teachers, that means they may have different motivations. And because identity formation varies from person to person, it's difficult to generalize anyway. So it's not really an issue about generalizing to the wider population. Our other hook, develop a relationship. Well, we've linked this into developing a rapport to get more honest answers. We've focused on this idea that there are status differences between pupils and researcher. And they may be less likely to open up to the researcher about issues such as sexism or racism. However, if they can develop a rapport, we might get them to open up and give more honest answers. And our final one, great, gain greater insight. Gaining greater insight allows us to achieve a stay in and understand the reasons and the impacts of the behaviors. Well, teachers may not be aware of the impacts of their actions, so this could potentially be an issue. So for example, if a teacher is labeling or they've placed students in a low set or stream, we know that they have negative impacts on people's self-esteem which also has an impact on your identity. If teachers aren't aware of those impacts, we can get an understanding of how the teacher feels about that. We can get an understanding of why the teacher has placed pupils in the lower sets and streams and we can gain a greater insight into it. Now, what we've showed you there is an approach called layering and we are attaching the who, the what, and the how all together. Now, not all of the points that you make need to refer to that item, or do they need to include the who, the what, and the how. Your better responses will try and remain focused on the context and the method throughout um, the essay, but there will be some inconsistent application. We saw with our introduction, that is largely going to be research methods based, but if you layer your responses, you can achieve better consistency. And we're going to show you a couple of examples of how we've done this in the main body of our essay. So we'll start here by focusing on access using unstructured interviews. So one limitation of using unstructured interviews to investigate in school process and identity formation is gaining access to pupils and teachers. We are going to apply this specifically to teachers and pupils now, as teachers and pupils have busy timetables and limited free time, arranging a suitable time to conduct the interviews might be difficult. And now we're going to focus on why that is important for pupil identity. Because the subject of identity formation could be considered controversial if teachers are found to have acted negatively, gatekeepers may refuse access to pupils and teachers. So you can see we've layered this response here. We've got a limitation of unstructured interviews, gaining access. Teachers and pupils having busy timetables. That's a feature of teachers and pupils. And we've also got a reference to identity formation because it is a controversial topic, particularly if teachers are found to have acted negatively. And what we're doing is we're hitting the who, the what and the how in this paragraph. Another example, one strength of using unstructured interviews is that the researcher can develop a rapport with pupils. This is particularly useful in getting pupils to open up about how education might shape their identity as they may be unaware of the impacts of some interactions. For example, labeling by teachers can impact on identity, but pupils may assume that labels such as lazy are a feature of their identity rather than socially constructed by teachers. So again, we're talking about the who, the what, and the how, and we've got it all into one point. We're making those links between the method and the context. Our, our responses are largely centered on investigating that specific issue using that specific method. Now, we can also add in evaluations. If we look at the most recent point we made about using unstructured interviews, how the researcher can develop a rapport with pupils is particularly useful in getting pupils to open up about how education might shape their identity, as they may be unaware of the impacts of some interactions. For example, labeling by teachers can impact on identity, but pupils may assume that labels such as lazy are a feature of their identity rather than socially constructed. 
So what we've done is we've highlighted a strength. So in order to evaluate that, we might pick a limitation that we can link explicitly to that strength. We've suggested that researchers can get pupils to open up. And now we've put in status differences between researchers and pupils mean that pupils do not open up if this rapport is not formed and this could negatively impact on validity. So there is an evaluation, a judgment about whether or not rapport can be effective. If it's not effective, it can impact negatively on the validity of an unstructured interview. Now, finally, conclusions. Now, a conclusion is a judgment based upon how effective the method is. You can make these throughout your essay or you could do a separate short paragraph at the end. The focus needs to be on whether the method is effective and what could have been done to make the research of this topic more effective if you don't believe that the method is effective. We've put up an example here. Unstructured interviews are an effective method as they produce qualitative data that gives research and insight into the ways in which identity forms as a result of an in-school process and how pupils react to these processes. While it is a small scale method and therefore unlikely to be generalized to others, it can form the basis of further research. For example, by following up the findings of the interview across a number of different schools through the use of self-completion questionnaires, this process of triangulation would give the researcher a wider range of responses and improve the reliability of the study. Triangulation is a really good way to show that you understand the big picture in sociology, that you understand that researchers often look for validity and reliability and therefore would use a mixed methods approach. Particularly with triangulation, getting a qualitative piece of research and a quantitative piece of research and merging them together so they've got greater validity and reliability would make the research more effective and you are proposing a solution, um, which is a really good way to conclude your essay. So, so just some final hints, a top band answer, one that's getting 17 to 20 on the mark scheme, needs a consistent application to both the method and the context throughout. You need to be able to use sociological terminology in the correct context. Draw appropriate conclusions and evaluate the effectiveness of the method in that specific context and draw up a range of relevant material on the selected method. So if you think about in a 20 mark essay, you need a range of strengths and limitations in order to get into that top band. And that concludes this Methods in Context walkthrough for Tutor to You for AQA A-Level Sociology. Thanks for watching.